Okay, what you're going to learn in this tutorial is how to put animation on your player character. And then what you see down below is our opponent character. You'll learn how to put that basic animation on that character as well. Uh, this obstacle here is an impassable obstacle. When we move down next to our opponent character, the AI activates. Our opponent character starts chasing after us, starts uh, firing at us. Uh, you'll learn how to put the sound effects on for when the opponent character chases after your player character. When our player uh, character gets far enough away from our opponent character, then the opponent character stops searching for our player character. Integer. So we're going to click here and then what we want for this is we want to enter a setting of uh, 50. So then we're going to click done. So I'm going to left click off of there. So now what we have is this is asking for this being G develop is asking for everything for this. However, set to Y. So what we can do is we can just highlight this. I just left clicked and held and dragged over that. I'm going to hold control C, left click here, right click, and then select paste. So we have the same code here. Now what we need to do is click here, change this to capital Y. It's important, capital Y. So now with capital Y, that should be good. Now we'll click OK. OK, so we have this here, which says, when this variable is equal to one, this is the variable we made up connected to the opponent, do this. However, when we made this variable, and this is the variable of opponent, we set this to be equal to zero. So we didn't tell this variable when to change the one. We're just saying like, when it's equal to one, do this. However, because we're not changing it to equal one, it's just gonna stay zero, which is what we made it. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set that up now. So with this highlighted blue, and you can see like this is outlining this, we're gonna click this add an event button. We're then gonna click add condition. We're gonna to go to common conditions for all, position. Then we're gonna select distance between two objects. We're gonna left click here. And then what we're gonna do is select the opponent for the first object, the second object, the player. And then for the distance uh, between the two objects, we're gonna set this for 200. So with that setting there, we're going to click OK. So now we're saying when the distance of the player is below 200 pixels, that, oh, sorry, when the, the opponent's distance to the player is below 200 pixels, do something. And what we want that something to be for it to do is we want that something to be that that variable that we set up to be equal to zero, we want that to be equal to one. So guess what? Once that equals one, then this activates where our uh, opponent will say, oh, equal to one. Okay. Now I'm going to move towards the play, uh, the player. So this almost reminds me of like uh, uh, when you're, when I was a kid, we used to play a game, green light, red light, you know, you would hold up a green light, you would go red light, you would stop. That's kind of what like the, the variable is right here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just change. We're going to tell, uh, we're going to tell G develop that when this happens to change this CU variable to one, because right now it's set for zero, which is what we made it at. Okay. So I'm going to click add action, common conditions for all. And then we're going down to variables. So when we click that, we see this, we want modify the variable of an object. We're going to left click here. The variable that we're talking about is the variable that we made called CU that is connected to this object variable, uh, sorry, opponent variable, right? We're going to click here. This is the variable CU. And then we're going to click equal to. And uh, we want this to be set to one. So now we're going to click OK. So basically we're saying when the uh, opponent's distance to the player is below 200, change the CU variable to one. Once the opponent 
sees that its variable has been changed to one, which we have this set up, then this happens here. Okay, so let's test this out. So I'll maximize this. So our opponent is, you know, down near the bottom. So we're moving near the top. So when we start to get close to that opponent, it should start to chase after us. Up oh, and there you go. So now the opponent is after us, which is what we want. Okay, so our opponent chases after us. However, that AI is very simple. Let's make it so that if we get a far enough distance away from the uh, opponent, the opponent stops chasing us. So how we do that? Okay, we want to make sure we have this highlighted here, right? Because we're going to I'm going to show you how to do that now. We're going to click the plus button to make a new event. When I say this here, and you're like, why does he keep saying that? It's because if we don't do it, we'll make a, a sub event. We can make a sub event. Uh, when we don't want to. So anyway, what we want to do is we want to have this set up so that this works from uh, when we get far enough away, something happens. And when that something happens is we're going to change our variable. We're going to control things that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to click add a condition, common condition for all. We're going to go to position. We're going to select distance between two objects. We're going to select the opponent. Then object two, we're going to select the player. And then for the distance, we're going to change this to 300. Now this, uh, what we want here is we want this to be not below, but actually above 300. So in other words, we get enough space between, and I might've misspoke before. If we get enough space between us and the opponent, we want our, opponent to stop chasing us. So to do that, right right now this is set so when it's under 300 this will chase us. That's what makes us that's what makes the opponent chase us in the first place. This uh this action. I mean this condition. So what we're going to do is we're going to invert this. So now when the distance is more than 300, we're going to make something happen, okay? So this one when we're below 200, we have all this set up and the opponent chases us. This one is we're setting up uh, so that when the when you're more than 300 pixels away, we make something happen. And that's something that we want to happen eventually. We want to be for the opponent to stop chasing us. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to make things so that we're going to check. We're going to set things up so our variable changes. So how are we going to do that? We're going to go to action, click add action. We're going to go to common actions for all objects. Uh, we're going to go down to variables. We're going to select modify a variable of an object. We're going to select opponent. We're going to click variable, select uh, CU for our variable. We're going to click equal to. And then for this setting, we're going to make this be zero. And then we're going to click OK. Okay, so we're like, when you're more than 300, when the opponent is more than 300 pixels away from the player, change our variable to uh, be equal to zero. So with this blue line here, that's good. That's what we want. We're going to click to make a new event. And then for this new event, what we want to do is select add action, go to common condition for all objects. We want to go down to variables. The value of an object's variable is what we want to select. It's the opponent's variable. It's the CU variable that we want to work with. The sign of the test is equal to. And then this is going to be, this setting is going to be zero. So then we're going to click OK. OK, so we're saying when this variable CU is equal to zero, we want something to happen. So we're going to get, set what we want to happen. And what we want to happen is for our opponent to stop. So we're going to click add action. We're going to go to common action for all movement. And then we're going to select stop the object. The object that we want to stop is the opponent. So then, uh, and I just left clicked here just to get away from that menu. I'm then going to click OK. OK, so let's test this out and see if this works. We're going to click preview. 
maximizing this just by pushing that square. So we'll stay near the top, make sure that our opponent character is not chasing us. It isn't. So now we'll go in the distance. Component character sees us. I'm purposely letting it stay close. Now I'm going to outrun it. Try to outrun it. And now there you go. When I got enough distance, our opponent character stopped chasing us. And that's exactly what we want to happen. I'm just going to click here, X to get out of that preview. Okay, so our opponent character is working well. However, let's make it so our opponent character can attack. So what we're going to do is make it so that our opponent character doesn't just chase our player character, but can actually shoot at our player character. So we're going to go to new scene and we need to make a bolt something that the opponent character will actually be firing at uh, our player character. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this plus button here to the right. I'm going to select Sprite. I am going to name this Bolt. I'm then going to click the plus button here. I'm then going to select Edit with Pisco. This is uh, GDevelop's built-in graphic editor. And what we want to do now is we want to resize this area right here. So I, I click this, and I'm going to click this again. And then what I'm going to do now is uh, where we see 64.